We're taught we don't matter. We're taught we're insignificant. We're taught to be quiet. We're taught to stuff it down. We're taught not to speak about it. We're taught that we're too dramatic. We are the problem. If we don't do this, we're not perfect. If we're not perfect, we're not loved. You know, all of that stuff. You're taught all that. It's really difficult programming. So when you have been exposed to, raised by, and continually gaslit by someone who is manipulating you, no matter what we call them, okay, um, someone who is a manipulative person who is toxic in the way they treat others, you start to get ideas about yourself that are not your own beliefs about yourself. What they are is conditioning and programming that's been put in your head to believe you are a certain thing in order to keep you in a certain role that a narcissist or a toxic person needs you in, in order to support the delusion they have about the life that, that they believe is what's real. Okay. So they need you in a role. They fill your head with information about who you are, the things you do. You're too sensitive. You're, you're, you don't make good decisions. You're, you can't be trusted. You're, you know, all the things they tell you, it gets up in our head. They get in our head, okay? And then when once those thoughts are in your head, it's like programming. It's, it's conditioning to believe that they're true. Will come to me a lot when they're trauma bonded and when they're in the middle of the middle of the discard, a middle of trying to leave, trying to stay away, trying to end things themselves, whatever it is. And they'll be like, why can't I let go? Why can't I just end things? Why can't I walk away? Why can't I, I know what they are. I can see what they're doing. They're not the good person I thought they were. They're not who I thought they were. Why can't I let go? So we know all we know about trauma bonding. So there's that piece. Okay. Yes. There's another piece though. And that's us. That is what we believe about ourselves, what we need from the relationship, what we think we're getting from that other person, what we, what we fear, what we, the reason we can't let go. So often with people, it'll happen that we'll talk and we'll start to uncover these, these rooted beliefs that often come from their upbringing, often, not always, okay? Um, when they had toxic parents or if you had a very strict dynamic with your parents or if you had fear of your parents, it doesn't have to, they don't have to have been narcissists per se. We can't diagnose anyone. Just We're just going to be real general here and say when you've had an upbringing that, that didn't allow you to learn to think for yourself about yourself. In other words, you're told over and over again, well, you just make the stupidest decisions, don't you? Or, well, you know, I'm always having to clean up your messes. And, you know, when you don't, when you're, when you're raised without belief in yourself um, and through toxic upbringing, beliefs form. Okay. And those beliefs sometimes are the thing that is holding you to the narcissist now, but there is some magic in the talking that often brings it out and brings it forth for people. So for yourself, ask yourself the questions, you know, why am I holding on? What is it I'm afraid of? What is, maybe it's not fear. What is it that I, what am I actually feeling? Why can't I let go? It stop making it about the toxic person and make it about yourself and see if any, any answers come. Sometimes then you'll get to the root of your programming, your conditioning of what you believe about yourself. What I see um, in, when I see and know of children or, or a, adults and young adults, especially because they're still forming who they are, right? When you see it in people who have to uh, parallel parent and you, you hear the stories of the, the things their children struggle with, um, you will see this forming. You'll see these beliefs forming. You'll see that the narcissist doesn't allow or the toxic person, whatever, doesn't allow the child to have a belief system of their own about themselves. They're being told who they are. They're being instructed on what to think about themselves. Does that make sense? If you've lived through this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you see a child ra being raised like that. You can see the makings of this, okay? You can see the makings of someone that is believing something about themselves to please a toxic parent. Not consciously, it's subconsciously. We go through life with these beliefs about who we are, and they're often these negative things if it's, if it's from a toxic person. Even the golden child will have negative self-beliefs 
because the narcissist can only control you through fear and threats. They can't control you through the good things. The good things are breadcrumbs to keep you there when they give you the fear and threats, right? So they, you'll be learning all these, these things about yourself that are not true. We think of our beliefs as set in stone, but they're really not, okay? You can have a belief in an instant by having something happen, something shocking. If you have something shocking happen, forever forward, you will believe that that is what's going to happen if you do the thing, right? That's the nature of trauma, okay? Something shocking happens, and then anything that resembles it reinforces the shock. If you can shock yourself into a more positive belief, the same thing can hold true, all right? And it doesn't have to be scary shocking. I don't mean like shocking. I just mean important, something that imp makes an impression on you, that, that makes a difference, uh, so that you, and then we have to actively seek because see the bad things happening because they're shocking, it, it, we don't need to actively seek them. Right. So if you have something that sets a belief in you that is like terrible, and then a year later, somebody does the same thing and you're like, Oh, I guess it's true. You don't have to think, I guess it's true. It automatically, because of the shocking nature signals back to that first mem that memory of that first shocking horrible thing right and then you can see it and then you start thinking about it and then you actively participate in it and then it perpetuates into a belief right that gets really stuck in our heads so but with, with the positives unfortunately you can have a really positive experience of yourself and you may not remember you may not catch the little things that reinforce that positive thing. So we have to actively be looking for them. We don't have to. It's beneficial to actively be looking for the positive things. So if you see something in yourself like, I am a failure, but you have a major success or even a minor success, you have a success enough for you to go, whoa, I did that thing and that was awesome. Okay, cool. I guess I'm not such a loser or whatever you think about yourself, right? And then you forget about it a week later because you're not actively looking for minor successes. I mean, it can be a matter of, oh my gosh, I got everything done on my to-do list. Oh, look, I succeeded at this. Oh, I made a friend smile. That's awesome. That, that's a success. You know, whatever it is that to you feels like success, you got it. If you tie them together intentionally, you start to change your belief. You're still going to have that horrible negative counter belief there that you're trying to get rid of. And you're overriding it with new neural pathways over time to change it to something more true, more like the actual truth. To take away here is finding these beliefs can actually help you break the trauma bonds. They can help, they're part of the process. Okay, because if what you're doing is hanging on and you don't know why, often I hear people say this a lot. Okay, they say to me, I, don't, I can't let go. I don't know why. I don't know why. I can't let go. There's nothing I like about that person, but I can't let go and I don't know why. And we can keep throwing the word trauma bond at them over and over and over and over again. And all that does is throw a word on top of it, right? It's not, there's no solution in that word. It, it helps to understand it. Absolutely. It does help to know that it's normal, that you're having a normal reaction. But at a certain point, we got to figure out how to navigate out of it, right? And so understanding that sometimes the programming that you've gotten, that the conditioning you've received is a piece of why we're hanging on. So if I believe I'm worth nothing and I don't even realize that I believe that, okay, but I think, but, but for some reason I'm hanging on to this person and I go, oh my gosh, just my hanging on gives me a sense of meaning. I get it. It's not that I'm hanging on to them. It's that I'm hanging on to this experience because it gives me a sense of feeling of a sense of meaning for myself. And if I have meaning, then I matter. And if I matter, then I should exist. And so if I let go of that, oh my gosh, how scary. So when you're discovering these beliefs you have, please, please give yourself like a year, okay, of no self-judgment. No self-judgment. Because if you judge yourself for feeling those things, you're going to trap yourself back into feeling those things plus worse. Okay. So try your best, whatever it takes, get some help, whatever to witness yourself and in, in these beliefs, you have to let them open and unfold. You have to look at them. It's like throwing your cards on the table. You got to look at them. Okay. And as you're looking at them, if you start judging them, you are then condemning yourself to keep reliving them.
happens. You're going to have feelings about it, but don't, you don't have to um, attach too much to the feelings. Does that make sense? You can let the feelings be there. You can feel them. And you can realize, oh, when I feel shame, it has a feeling that's icky. It has a feeling of blah, 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 whatever it is for you, an emotion that goes with it. When I feel when I feel like I'm not worth anything, it has all these emotions that go with it. Okay. But you don't have to judge having them. Does that make sense? Let go of it because it really will help speed up everything. Hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up, all that stuff. Um, share as you will these videos if you think they're going to help anyone. Take care. Bye-bye.